Hello everyone. In this presentation, we are going to see about the indications of antibiotics after doing root canal treatment. There are different opinions exist among different dentists whether antibiotics are needed after doing root canal treatment or not. In this presentation, we are going to evaluate in what are the situations where antibiotics are needed and in what are the situations where antibiotics are not needed immediately after doing root canal treatment. We can say that there are two schools of thought. Those who favor that the antibiotics are not needed after doing root canal treatment have this opinion or this concept in their explanation. We all know that the tooth which is indicated for root canal treatment is often infected or it is devoid of the blood supply. So if in those situations, even if you are administering an antibiotic, the antibiotics cannot enter inside the root canal system to destroy those microorganisms. Why? Because once the root canal system is infected or necrotized, in those situations, there will be no intact blood supply. If there is no blood supply, which is entering inside the root canal system, then the antibiotics which travel in the bloodstream can never enter inside the infected root canal system and it can never cure the endorontic infection. So, antibiotics are not needed. This is the first school of thought. But there are some other schools of ideas or some other schools of thought where it is said that antibiotics are needed after doing root canal treatment. In those situations, what are all the suggestions they say? The first one is the, the presence of the periapical infection. We all know that once the root canal get infected, there will be and periapical infection from the microorganisms through the apical foramen, they will go to the periapical region and there is going to be a periapical infection. So, these antibiotics are not indicated for entering inside the root canal system and destroy those microorganisms, but for the microorganisms which are present surrounding the tooth structure, we need to give antibiotics. This is the first opinion or first thought about the need for antibiotic. The second one is whenever we are doing cleaning and shaping, we can see that through the apical foramen, there will be millions of bacteria escaping to the periapical region. One of the most important reasons for pain or infection after doing root canal treatment is the escape of microorganisms through the apical foramen to the periapical region. But in a smaller extent, the body's immune mechanism can handle it. But all of a sudden, one fine day, we are doing cleaning and shaping and millions of bacteria are entering into the periapical region. So in those situations, the body need little support from the antibiotics in order to counteract the uh, infection or in order to counteract the pathogens which are entering in the periapical region. So this is the second one. And the third and the final thought is whenever you are doing root canal treatment, we are supposed to do a clear isolation with rubber dam. But if there is a rubber dam which is leaking or because of some situations we are not using rubber dam, we can see that from the oral cavity, bacteria can enter inside the root canal system through saliva while doing cleaning and shaping. I am not talking about the microorganisms which are present inside the root canal system, but from the saliva, the, in, the root canal system may get contaminated. For example, let's tip that you are doing an intentional root canal treatment where the root canal system is not infected and free of pathogens. but while doing cleaning and shaping from the salivary contamination, now the root canal get infected and this can go into the periapical region and may establish an infection. So whenever the rubber dam is leaking or a proper isolation is not followed in those situations, antibiotics are indicated. 
Now, I have given the option whether antibiotics are needed or not needed. Some situations antibiotics may not be needed or in some situations antibiotics may be needed. So now let's see that. And what are the situations where antibiotics are not needed? Okay. So one, you are following a good isolation and whenever you are doing an root canal treatment in a vital teeth, for example, the tooth which is bleeding while preparing, after preparing the access cavity with an index bed supply, we can say that the tooth is vital. In those situations, there may be presence of bacteria, but there may not be too much of bacteria or in those situations where uh, we are doing root canal treatment for a prosthetic need or maybe for as an abutment and which may be a supraerupted tooth or for any such situations where we are doing an intentional root canal treatment in those situations antibiotics are not needed the second situation is non infected root canal treatment uh, root canal systems like that uh, the tooth may be symptomatic maybe the late stage of reversible pulpitis or early irreversible pulpitis in those situations and the second very important is the teeth which has undergone trauma the easiest way to differentiate whether the tooth is infected or non-infected is there will be no periapical pathology in a radiograph in a non-infected root canals after trauma the tooth may have the pulp may have become necrotized but it is not infected we may see a necrotic pulp but a non-infected necrotic pulp tissue over there so in those situations antibiotics are not needed and whenever there is a presence of sinus tract in the presence of sinus tract even if there is some exudate formation through the sinus tract or even if there is an extrusion of the debris the secondary inflammatory byproducts which are formed will be extruded through the sinus tract in those situations antibiotics are not needed and finally if you are doing a meticulous disinfection pro protocols and a very good cleaning and shaping technique with the proper use of root canal irrigation in those situations also antibiotics may not be needed so then what are the situations where antibiotics are needed the first situation where antibiotics are needed is the presence of cellulitis or space infection cellulitis is a diffuse swelling of the oral region in those situations it is better to go for antibiotics because if untreated it might become a space infection or if the patient is reporting with a space infection in those situations we may have to go for an antibiotic the second situation is patient who have diabetes mellitus in, for those who are having diabetes they may have a immunity which is compromised or which is comparatively uh, compromised compared to that of a healthy individual so in this in those situation uh, especially when it is uncontrolled in those situations it is better to go for an antibiotic even if you are following all the protocols so the third situation is in case of immunocompromised patients for example those who are having liver diseases renal diseases or maybe a, 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 those who have undergone uh, cancer treatments chemotherapies or any such uh, immunocompromised situations in all those situations it is better to go for an antibiotic even though you are following all the protocols and the next is whenever uh, you are not able to follow a proper isolation for example the patient is not cooperative for a, a rubber dam application or maybe a third molar where the isolation was not possible or maybe you notice while doing the root canal treatment that there is a leaky rubber dam and the root canals are getting contaminated in all those situations it is uh, better to go for an antibiotic so now we have come to the and one more situation is certain clinical situations like uh, the patient would have undergone root canal treatment in the past and the patient would have got a big swelling or a cellulitis after finishing the root canal treatment in those situations the patient will be highly sensitive and 
in those situations we can go for an antibiotic or the next situation is whenever we are going uh, you have done a treatment without antibiotic and the next day patient is reporting with pain and you may not be very sure so in those situations we can give antibiotics so these are certain clinical situations and depending upon your expertise and the past experience it is better to decide whether the patient need an antibiotic or not so whenever it is required to give antibiotic the antibiotic of choice which i still practice is the amoxicillin 500 mg thrice daily for 3 days and metronidazole 400 mg thrice daily for 3 days people suggest that says that amoxicillin is resistant in many clinical situations and amoxicillin is not effective and the bacteria are all resistant but still i feel like that those pathogens which are causing a dental infection are still effective for amoxicillin and amoxicillin in an oral and maxillofacial region still it can be considered as a wonderful antibiotic and maybe for some other systemic infections amoxicillin may be resistant but not for the oral infection especially after doing root canal treatment i still prefer amoxicillin so this is quite safe and we can add metronidazole in all those situations where the tooth is necrotic and what some situations for for example if the patient has, is immunocompromised or diabetes or the patient has reported with a big swelling in those situations instead of amoxicillin i will go for amoxicillin with potassium clavulinate that is quite effective for most of the situations but there may be a third situations where you have given an antibiotic and maybe after a day or two the patient is still reporting with uh, symptoms or there is a swelling or uh, the symptoms are you are not able to control the symptoms with the antibiotic or the patient is allergic to amoxicillin in those situation i will go for ofloxacin and ornithosol combination tablets remember that ofloxacin is twice daily for three days not amoxicillin is th thrice daily and ofloxacin is twice daily for three days so i have given my ideas and opinions and what i practice in my clinical practice about the use of antibiotics i hope this is useful and I give your valuable opinions and suggestions in the comment and let's meet with some other presentation shortly have a nice day thanks for watching till the end